and then uh, in May that went away. Uh, just for convenience, I'll ask here, okay. and I'll come back to you. I won't forget you. Okay. So, like for example, what what I used to do if I want to take a particular point, I get to that point and I I take averaging, it average, and I just keep the the GPS on that particular point for about five minutes. So in that in that case, does it mean that the the, the accuracy before I, I, I actually mark the point, it, it tells you that hey, the accuracy is like two meter or yeah two meter one meter to that point. Does it mean that if I come back there, it will not be it will not be as accurate as precise as uh, the, the okay. time of recording? This is a very good point. You have a very good idea, but you need to execute it a slightly different way. Okay. Yes, if you take repeated measurements with your GPS mm -hmm. and use a mean, you, you'll you plot them, you can see the distribution, and use the mean, the mean will be more accurate than any one of those measurements alone, okay. potentially. Okay. But over five minutes is not enough. Okay. Because over five minutes, the arrangements of the satellites hasn't changed very much. What has changed in those five minutes are the clouds, the air movement, things that affect how the, the signal moves through the atmosphere, but not the positions of the satellites. Yeah. So to get an accurate reading like you want, you want to do that several times a day over days mm -hmm. until you have a large enough sample size mm -hmm. that the statistics tell you that the point, the center is here with a certain distribution around it. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can do that. So, but you so need to do it over a longer period. Yeah, a longer period, like one hour, no. 20 minutes? No, like several times a day over several days. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's not that easy. Yeah, because, because take for example, I'm sampling a one hectare plot, and I need to get the, the, the GPS coordinate of this point, this point, this point, this point. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like set the GPS and put it on the, on the pole here, and I'm walking around here. Yeah. By the time I finish one or two five by five, I mark this point. And by the time I walk and get here, I do the same. I put the GPS there. It takes five, 10, 15 minutes. At times when you come there, the averaging is like um, seven, five, seven, eight hundred. Then now I take the point. So, well, for me, I feel that that is the, 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 the accuracy it's like more precise. It's improving. But, yeah, but from what you're telling me now, it looks like I have to leave it there longer. No. <laughs> no, you just need to come back more often. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you don't, there's no reason to leave it there. Okay. Take the coordinate, Yeah. go do your work. Okay. Come back, take the coordinate again, go do your work. Okay. And do that as many times as, as you can. The more you do it, the better it will be. Okay. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> I'll get to you. For the reasons of camera and filming, I'll stay on this side. What about those of us that just have to collect for the herbarium? You know, you make random collections. Yeah. How would you just stay in a place and keep taking the GPS? You know, immediately <coughs> you finish collecting, you move yeah. to another place. Uh, in practical sense, would you still come back again and start? Sure, sure. In practical sense, you don't want to do what he's doing. Yeah, because he's stationed, he's working. Yeah. And uh, he has already set up his uh, coordinates and all that, and he's yeah. working. There may be ecological studies. Exactly. But for taxonomists, I just have to take collections, make your feed notes, and move. That's right. In Moses' case, he has a reason to be more precise, more specific, because of the questions he wants to ask. That's not, as, that's not generally the case when collecting ad hoc. You don't want to take that effort to make sure that you're that accurate. So you just take the reading at that time, and you take one. All I'm asking is that you also record the accuracy at that time, because then we know how big the circle should be. No? And it will be four meters or it will be 30 meters. Whatever it is, that's fine. That's just how good it is. But record it so people know. That's all that's made. Okay, finally.
I can jump. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I wanted to know more about the, the right way to record your GPS regions because some will give you the um, degrees, minutes, seconds, others in decimals. Because sometimes when you go to Google Maps, it prefers to look like the decimals or so. Mm -hmm. So, which is the ideal way to pick your readings if you want to actually map? In my experience, if you have no other reason to use degrees, decimal, minutes, mm -hmm. or degrees, minutes, seconds, if you have some compelling reason to use those, go ahead. Okay. But otherwise, use decimal degrees for the simple reason that, two simple reasons. One, you're right. You can use it directly in Darwin Core and map it. The others you would otherwise have to translate. That's reason one. The second reason is that the decimal degree representation in the GPS is the one that shows you the most digits. So it's the most specific. So keep that one. Other questions? Coming. Seems people are very interested in GPSs. Because they don't, because they know what's coming with this retrospective georeferencing thing and they don't want to do that. Okay. So, what I'm asking is if I want to georeference material and uh, it was corrected some times back. And it's not one specimen, it's like a whole collection. And they never used the right, the, the precise decimal, decimal degrees. They have given you coordinates, but they have given not very precise. Mm -hmm. So is there a formula that after, after capturing all the data, I can calculate the decimal degrees using a formula rather than using each specimen at a time, yes. because that will take a lot of time. Yes, the answer is yes. You can use a formula to determine the uncertainty based on the coordinate precision that you were given. Yes, is it possible to that is possible. Formula? Yes. It's not a simple formula, but yes, it is something you can put in a spreadsheet. Well, that's maybe what I wanted you to provide us with mm -hmm. the formula, because yeah. you may need to, to map and uh, whomever recorded the data never used the, yeah. the decimal degrees. Yeah. We'll see more about that. Okay. Um, but it brings up another interesting point. You have legacy data that have latitude and longitude information, but it also has a description. Sometimes the description will be more specific than the coordinates, in which case Fine, you use the coordinates to understand basically where it should be, but use the description to find out exactly where it should be because it's more specific. Other times the coordinates are more specific than the description, even with a precision problem. In that case, you use the coordinates to determine the place, not just the location. You always want to use the most specific information that you have. Other questions? Okay. So, in the answering of all those questions, I often said coordinate uncertainty in meters. So this is basically the radius in a point radius method. We're trying to draw a circle around everything that could be interpreted as the place we're giving one measure, the radius of that circle, that says how far can it be from the actual latitude and longitude given. There's a something, a concept that's very similar to that, that for historical purposes is called the maximum error distance. It's exactly the same idea, except the units may not be meters. Now why is that important? The reason that is important is because when you do a calculation of uncertainty, when you do a georeference, some of it is based on the offset information. For example, when we said five miles north of Davis, the units were miles. And so the contribution to our uncertainty 
will be in miles. And that's what the max error distance will be, in miles. We'll convert that later to meters. But when we do the original georeference, it has to be in the coordinates, sorry, in the uh, units that are in the locality description. So that's not going to be on the test, but it's something to remember when you see maximum error distance so that you understand the distinction. Now, finally, is the idea of uncertainty. Why is uncertainty different from precision or different from accuracy? Uncertainty in a georeference is basically a measure of how big an area the locality can be in. That looks similar to precision because it's a circle, but the precision was how big is the contribution to uncertainty because of a coordinate precision. So precision would be just one contribution to a circle like this one, but there are plenty of other things that contribute. When we have a georeference uncertainty, it's not just because of the coordinate precision. It's because of the coordinates, it's because of the direction, it's because of the distance, and it's because of the size of the original thing. It might also be because we don't know the datum. I'll get into the details of all the contributions to uncertainty now. Actually, not quite now, one slide more. What we're trying to achieve with a georeference, ultimately, is that we have a small uncertainty that's centered on the truth. As opposed to a larger uncertainty that's not centered on the truth at all. That's ideal. Most of the time we're unable to achieve that, and we're not even able to know that. Because we don't have the truth in our hands. What we have is a description made by someone at the time. And we're interpreting that. So we're two steps removed from the truth when we do a georeference. But we do the best that we can, and we hope that our result actually encompasses the truth. So this would be a bad georeference, because it doesn't contain the truth. This would be a good one, because it does. Now, why is it so hard? to arrive at the truth. It's because there are lots of different ways that uncertainties can creep into the process of georeferencing. Many of them. So, this is an example of Samuel's question. He has a column in the database that has latitudes and longitudes, but it's not very precise. The less precise it is, the more uncertainty it will contribute. And here's a table that 